Welcome to this session on pre-authentication risk-based or adaptive authentication, which is a new feature that we shipped with Access Manager 4.2. With Access Manager 4.1 and previous versions of Access Manager, we had the ability to, to calculate a risk value at authentication time. This pre-authentication check will allow us to look at certain attributes of the incoming request, IP address, HTTP header, cookies, and determine the type of authentication or whether we even need to authenticate a user before going on and accessing the protected resource or the SAML SP. As far as the configuration is concerned, uh, when you go into the new 4.1 UI, you have on the main page, you have the risk-based policies in here. And this has changed a little bit from 4.1.2. In here, we have the concept of a risk policy, which we're going to assign to a contract and then we have the rules that are built into the risk so we'll execute the risk policy and when that risk policy is executed we go through all the rules that are assigned to that risk policy to determine what the risk score for that user is so we'll go in here and we'll create new risk policy and the UI it's, it's essentially a wizard which allows you to create everything on the fly from one location so we give it a policy name uh, this one here, I'm actually going to check the incoming HTTP request into the IDP server to see if we have an X-forwarded 4 header. And if that X-forwarded 4 header has a particular uh, IP address value. And I'm going to use that to determine whether or not the request is coming in from an internal user or from an external user. If the user does have an X-forwarded 4 header that matches my value, I'm just going to ask the user to do a secure name password form contract authentication. If a user does not come in with that um, X forwarded for header, then I'm going to assume that the user is coming in externally and I'm going to ask that user to do an X509 authentication. So I just put in a description for it. Now we have to def define what IDP policy we want to assign this to. Uh, or, I beg your pardon, which cluster. So I'm going to assign it to, I only have one IDP cluster in this setup, and I'm going to do a pre-auth class in this scenario here. So I'll give it a, a name here. Uh, there we go, pre-auth. So this is just the name of the class that's going to be generated by this wizard. Now I need to add the rules to this policy. So I'm going to create a rule here. In this example, we spoke about the X forwarded for header. So I'm going to do a, an X forwarded for rule check here. Now, the X forwarded for comes in as a separate custom, or not a custom, a HT, an X forwarded for HTTP header. So I mentioned this earlier on, but when you're doing the pre auth check, you can check on all these criteria. All these criteria are also available in 4.1. The only, the only exception to that rule is uh, the user profile rule, which basically allows you to check for LDAP attributes. Now, the LDAP attributes are only available post-authentication, so we can't use it in a pre-auth check. But every other field in here you can use. So in this case, it's the X4 at 4 header. I'm just going to check for the X4 at 4. And in this case here, equals 2.2.2.2. .2 so if an X4 at 4 header comes in with this particular IP address, I will do a, uh, a, an authentication using X secure name password. Anything coming into the IDP server that doesn't have that attribute, I'm going to step up to X509. So I will apply that, click OK. And now I'm going to, OK, if, if this wizard asks me, do I want to add uh, any, any more rules to the existing policy? In this case, I won't. I'm just going to have this X4 to 4 header. Now I will have risk level. So I'm going to define a risk. Oh, let me just cancel back. I give this score. In the case where a user comes in with an X forwarded for header equal to 2.2.2.2, I will, it will evaluate to a risk score of zero. If I don't have an X forwarded for header value 2222, I will have a risk score of 100. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the actions. So the first one, if the risk score is less than 100, uh, I'm going to consider that to be a uh, low risk level and I will ask the user to step up to an X5, uh, I beg your pardon, a secure name password form contract. So I'll save that uh, and I'll create another one to handle the case where we have a risk greater than 100. So now if the risk is greater than or equal to 100, 
i.e. the user doesn't have the X4 in the four header. Uh, I will consider it medium risk and I'll do an additional step up authentication to X509. So I'll ask the user for their X509 contract. So once I save that, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to create a pre-auth risk-based class and it's going to assign it to the IDP cluster that I've just defined there. So um, once I go to my IDP server here, I'll see that I have a, an update. It's recognized that a change has been made. Let's go in and take a look at the change. I go into the local settings and the classes and the pre-auth there is my pre-auth class in there so the wizard's actually gone and created it in there and it has the low and medium conditions so now let's go and we'll create a method that uses that class and then eventually a contract for that method which will assign to a protected resource so let's call it a display name we'll have a pre check and i will assign it the pre so there's a, I'm not going to identify user because I don't want to identify a user with this particular method. I'm going to be doing either a step up authentication to uh, secure name password form or X509 and both those methods will identify the user. I'll save that out and now I will create a contract that takes advantage of that method. So now I'll call it a pre-auth uh, Oops. Contract. This is just a logical name, uh, but as a best practice, uh, make it as clear as you can because it these this information is referenced in log files. So I'll call it URI uh, pre auth xff. So my pre auth. And then I'll have my pre auth method in here. So that's, I'll push that over. Oh, and I'll just call it, there's my pre auth contract. Pre auth contract. Um, there's no available image, but I think I've saved one locally on the workstation. So let's just give this. I'll just I'll choose the file. going to browse to my hard drive and I should have an image in there that I can reference. There we go. So this is an image. It requires a description. Let's make the change there and now I've got the image. So let me update the IDP server with that information. I now have my contract to execute on the IDP server. I'm going to go over to the Access Gateway. So let me browse to the Access Gateway protected resource. And I'm going to assign a pre-auth contract to that protected resource. So I'll pick any protected resource here, this one here. And I will now assign it the pre-auth contract. So now what's going to happen is when I come in and access this particular protected resource, it's going to execute that contract, which is then going to evaluate the risk sco score based on uh, my incoming request. And if I have a risk score of less than 100, I'll be authenticating using secure name password. Anything over that, I will authenticate using the X509 certificate. So let's go and we'll update the IDP server now. Uh, bigger on the access gateway now. So I think we should both, the IDP server and the access gateway should both be updated. Lovely. So now let's bring up uh, a browser. Uh, to simulate the network condition, I have a plugin, a Firefox plugin called Modify HTTP Headers. And in here I have, I'm basically going to inject the X4 to 4 header from this workstation. So we'll run two, two test cases. The first one, I'm not going to inject the header. And in that scenario there, I should get prompted for my X509 certificate. In the second case, I'll enable this plugin so that the X4 to 4 header is injected and I should be prompted for my secure name password contract. 
Okay, so there is the protected resource that I want to hit. So I go in here, boom, I'm asked for my X509 certificate, which makes sense in this case here. I've not matched the, the rule. I've got a risk score of 100. 100 is considered medium risk, and I'm stepping up to X509 authentication. And now I hit my protected resource in there. So now let's shut the browser, restart the browser. But this time I'm going to enable this plugin here. So I'll go in and I'll open this plugin and I'll start it. So now what's going to happen is with this started and enabled, every request from this browser will have an X forwarded for a header of 2222. So let's go back to the protected resource that I hit a minute ago. And now instead of getting asked for my X509 for my X contract, I'm simply being asked for a secure name password form. And I go in and I log in successfully. Thank <music> you.